Now to a Crime Watch Daily Alert. The cruise ship industry rakes in $40 billion a year. But as our investigation uncovered, there's been a wave of shocking crimes taking place at sea. And today, we have the horror stories in a bid to help you protect yourself. 23 million vacationers who board these massive ships each year envision fun in the sun. But cruising is not always a dream vacation. He raped me. He, he strangled me. I went to the door to open it, and when I opened it, he forced his way in. He held me down. I fought him off as best I could. Laurie Dishman was aboard a Royal Caribbean cruise when she was brutally attacked. I tried so hard to get him off me. I just passed out. It was her first night aboard the ship. And the last thing he said to me before I passed out was you could have six more days of this. When she woke up, she reported the crime to the ship's purser. The head security guard and the purser came right in and sat right on the bed where the rape occurred. They knew who it was. This was a man who was a janitor that they had put into a security guard uniform. Afraid to leave her room and risk running into her rapist, she waited four hours to see the ship's doctor in the cabin where she was victimised. But when she finally arrived with a friend at the infirmary, there were no antiviral drugs available to her or even the option of a morning after pill. Instead, she was again sent back to the scene of the crime. A doctor handed us two grey garbage bags and said, Ms. Dishman, can you please go back to the cabin and collect the evidence that we need? Incredibly, that's what Laurie had to do, hours after being raped and before she was given any medical attention. Probably at least five, six hours after the rape occurred. They then took us in and performed the rape kit. Quite remarkably, Laurie received no further medical attention. She left the ship at the next port, flew back to the US, and then met with the FBI here in Long Beach, California. She made a full report, but no action was ever taken against the man who raped her, and he remained on board for the duration of the cruise. Shockingly, children can also be vulnerable on cruise ships, while parents are off relaxing, filling the confined areas equate to safety. Not necessarily, says maritime lawyer Jim Walker, who has litigated many cases of horrifying crimes on the high seas. A little 11-year-old girl from Brazil, sailing on the cruise with her grandmother, leaves the dining room, is followed out of the dining room by a waiter who touches her inappropriately, gropes her, fondles her, kisses her, right in the view of the CCTV cameras. Watch as the waiter assaults the girl while blocking the view of the security cameras on this Disney Dream cruise ship. Dawn Taplin was the Disney security officer who investigated the incident. She no longer works for the cruise line. She's literally trying to get away from him. I mean, you see her kicking her legs at, at one point, just trying to pull away from him. The 11-year-old was assaulted by 33-year-old Milton Braganza while the Disney ship was still in port in Florida. But Taplin says she was told not to call authorities when the girl's grandmother declined to file charges. If a crime is committed while you're hooked up anywhere here, it is an American, it is a United States, it is a Florida crime period. And I was ordered not to be making any phone calls to anybody. The ship sailed for two hours after the assault and when it docked in the Bahamas, the waiter was handed over to local authorities. He confessed to the assault, but incredibly was never charged with a crime. And instead of transporting him back to Florida, Disney Cruise Line arranged to have him flown home to India. In my professional and personal opinion, I think they wanted to, to get outside of uh, the United States limits and just get them off the ship in the Bahamas and just leave it alone. They viewed the CCTV on the ship before the ship set sail. So before they brought up the gangway, before they sailed from the U.S., before they left U.S. territorial waters, 
Disney absolutely knew that a crime occurred involving a sexual molestation of a little girl. And just last year at the same port on the same Disney Dream Cruise Line, a crew member admitted he lured a 13-year-old girl into an empty stateroom and molested her. The charge is false imprisonment, lewd and lascivious molestation. 37-year-old Ahmed Sofyan was sentenced to more than five years in prison for lewd molestation and false imprisonment of the minor. Her family has been left devastated. I am un unable to talk about the details of this crime without crying or shaking. None of us want to discuss this cruise, which has definitely turned into a nightmare. We asked Disney to respond and they sent us the following written statement. We have no tolerance for the behaviour that occurred in these incidents. We promptly reported both instances to law enforcement and terminated the employment of the crew members involved. We place enormous value on the trust our guests have in us and nothing is more important to us than the safety and security of each and every one of our guests. But cruise ship crime without punishment happens more often than most passengers know. Professor Ross Klein researched incidents and then started a website to track cruise ship crime. He found the statistics alarming. In 2005, uh, the rate of sexual assault on a ship was more than 50% greater than on land. And so one's risk was very high. The FBI's own website says it's only been tracking cruise ship incident reports since 2007 and even when crimes are reported they are difficult to prosecute and very seldom end in conviction. It's essentially a free-for-all. It's the high seas, it's the wild wild west. One reason, passengers rarely consider the flag their ship is sailing under or the legal implications of cruising in international waters. The Cruise Lines International Association would not comment on camera and instead sent Crime Watch Daily a written response saying, in part, the data posted by cruise lines clearly demonstrate that allegations of serious crime on cruise ships are rare. It's an industry that appears like you can have a lot of fun and it's just paradise, but there's a lot of misery that actually is taking place as well. Despite her experience, Laurie Dishman just wants cruising the high seas to be safe for everyone. My justice is to help someone not go through what I went through. We actually contacted the FBI about the cruise ship crime issue and the agency tells us in part that there are several challenges in prosecuting these types of crimes, including delays in reporting by victims, as well as response time, depending on when a ship arrives to port, and alcohol factoring into witness or victim accounts. In fact, in the first five months they tracked incidents on cruise ships, the FBI received 41 reports of sexual assault. Now, they went on to investigate 13 cases and five of those were closed because either the victim or the district attorney declined to prosecute.